Hi, this is Neil Turbin with the Metal Voice. And we have Nora and Jonah from Battle Beast. Yeah! yeah. It was an amazing show, guys. Thanks so much for uh, rocking out Anaheim in the Grove. Thank you. Yep. It was a great, great experience again. We were last year here with Sabaton and this year with Camelot. And great audience. Love amazing venue. Here. Amazing yeah. venue. So how's the tour been for you guys? I heard your voice. It's amazing. And guitar playing I mean you shredded my brains out so I mean <laughs> wow it's been great. people it's been great. people need to get Battle Beast in the US I mean in Europe you guys are playing some big festivals you're doing some big tours I mean here you're doing big tours so mm. that's great and um, wow I mean your performance the band is, is solid and tight and uh, the vocals are wow I mean thank you Pat Benatar drank some gasoline and she's rocking <laughs> rocking the US like wildfire <laughs> thank you so much yeah your stage presence is amazing, so uh, you got to tell us about that. Where are your, who are your influences? Who are you? Uh, Josh Dickinson, for example, Ronnie James Dio, Rob Halford, uh, Freddie Mercury, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Many, many. Like I have dozens of idols, but well, if I could say from females, Pat Benatar also, but uh, Janis Joplin is my biggest female idol. I think you've taken Janice Chapel to a new level. You know, <laughs> badass level. <laughs> she would be if she was here. I'm sure she'd be like, "Wow, this is pretty awesome." You know, great, great vocals. I mean, for male, female, doesn't matter. You know, it's just great vocals. Yeah, and yeah. I'm and a vocalist, I, so I can say yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, and I think the thing is that it doesn't matter are you male or female if you do your job the best way you can and you, you know, win the audience. So. Yeah, and you I have really that, and you it. have that presence. So, so do you have like other artists that are you know, from? There's vocalists, and then there's entertainers. Okay, so there's the vocalist part, and then there's the entertainer part. Yeah. That might that might not be the same. I mean, who would you say that there's any influence? If you, well, if you want to be an artist, you have to be good at combining of being a vocalist and entertainer, and that makes you better than someone else. Yeah, no one gives a fuck if you're just technical. Yeah, yeah because no there are, the, the world is filled with really good singers and really good performers, but if you can combine that, then there comes something even bigger. Oh, yeah. And he's my first ever idol that I 
listened and when I heard I will always love you by her it was like mind exploding because I was like I want to sing like that and I I actually started to develop myself as a singer when I heard how, how cool I mean this is great and, uh, you know you joined after Nora so you know how did that go like in terms of was there an audition process were they looking for a second guitar player or was, well, you yeah. can explain. Yeah, well, that, they fired their last guitar player, and then they were without the lead guitar player, and was then... It during a tour, or was it during Yeah, album, actually, in between? straight after one tour in 2015. And then, the my brother called me. My brother plays keyboard in Belfast. Let's get to know people. Yeah, and he, he called me that, hey, you have two weeks, and you want to join. I'm like, Belfast, two weeks? I, <laughs> like, what the fuck? And you're going on tour, or...? Yeah, the first the fin Finland tour with oh, the they wow. did after the European tour, and then yeah, it was I don't remember much of the time, but I played some guitar. <laughs> so and you guys then, knew each other before that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, very well. for years, 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 years. Yeah, but then then the, then I took my guitar, I practiced all the songs, and now three years after that, we've made one album together, and we are better than ever. And what kind of uh, shows are you playing over in Europe? I mean, I know you guys were on some big shows, and some of the production of the videos is just you know very. You know, great live performances and great festivals. Shows. Festivals are pretty big. Depends, of course, on the festival. If we're headlining, it's a smaller festival still. But yeah, we played some very, very big slots last summer. And then our own tours, we do between 500 and 1,000 people. Nice. So, what what challenges do you find that are, are different for the you know the market over here versus, let's say, the market over in the, the Nordic? part of the world and the thing here. I think about is the distances because when you come here you're gonna drive 20,000 miles and that's it's not hard. so cheap and Europe is far smaller in that case that you can book shows far closer to each other so that's easier and then of course the culture is a bit different that here the main focus is to have a very good show of course everywhere but here people are crazy about merchandise in Europe, they're not so crazy about merchandise, so you do different things a yeah. bit different, differently. But yeah, Europeans don't like go haywire when they see a new band. They don't buy everything like boom, boom, boom. But Americans, when they see a band they like, they're like, I need nine shirts and four CDs. That's a good thing, though. That's a, that's they'll the American keep you, They'll way. keep you employed for a while. Yes, yeah, that's I, a, and that's pay for the we, lighting ring and the smoke machine. Yeah, we could never do this without the merch amounts we have. Here. I really love crowds in states and in Canada because you always embrace the bands that are good and yeah. not not necessarily know. But if no. you're good, you do, do a kick-ass show, then everybody's like on your side, and that is something that I yeah. really appreciate. that a lot of the fans that are here at the Camelot, Delane, and Battleby show, I noticed that, you know, it's kind of like a prog, you know, yeah. power metal crowd. Yeah. But I think that, you know, with the metal voice, you know, we, we cover all kinds of different metal bands. Yeah. And I think one of the things is, is very, you know, important to me is that we, people come to see Battle Beast because I think you guys cross over, you know, more than one genre. It's not just like symphonic metal. It's not just prog, but I mean, you guys are song oriented. So tell me yeah. about that. Like it's yes. not just about a, a guitar, a 17 minute guitar solo. Never. Or a drum solo. I mean, I didn't hear 100,000 100, 100, years will. Peter Chris, you know, playing a drum yeah. solo. Battle Beast will never be like you that. You guys have we, real songs. We write really songs. Song the songwriters in this band, we write songs. We don't, the solos are icing on the cake. If there's a 30 second guitar solo, I think the longest one on this album is 28 or something. And that's really, then I have to do so many notes as I can. <laughs> but this, that's icing. Yeah. The song comes first, then it's vocal melodies, getting the best of her, and that, that's how you make a, like big music. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that one of the best things about being in this band is that the songs nowadays are actually written for my voice. Yes. Uh, and and al also challenging me every time uh, so that I can actually develop myself as a vocalist yes. after or during every process of doing a new album. But still kind of being in those boundaries that I can do and I can deliver them all over again on our live shows and for, for me and for everybody in our band we think we are like definitely a live band so it's like I need to nail it definitely a live show and, and it must be better or even like the same as in the album so that's what I really love Maybe you could tell me a little bit about the Bringer of Pain album the new album that you guys have Bringer of Pain is co-written album by the band like me, my brother, Aero, the bass player, her and our other guitar player. I think the drummer is the only one who didn't actually write anything but he also gave his input in every drum like sure. stuff and I think that's it's how you, that's how you make a good record that you're actually very picky about. You make a shit ton of songs and then you make 30 best out of them and then you actually try to get the best out of everyone instead of doing this solo stuff. Thanks for stopping here in Anaheim and uh, you know, visiting California, sunny California. Yeah. Our pleasure. Hopefully it's yeah. sunny in Finland and you guys are not yeah. eating too much tar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tar. <laughs> I don't know, they, they make some alcohol drink with tar. And yeah, they someone do. Tried to and they it. shampoo with tar. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, you should try it. It kind of keeps things together. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You blend in with the road when you're driving. You're here. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. Cheers, Neil Cheers. Turpin and Battle Beast. Yeah. Nora and Jonah. <laughs>